Okay, so welcome back to another video in the series Building an HTML5 Game. In this video, we kind of talk about how you can set up a camera system to follow the tank around as you're driving. And then we also added a simple background so we have a reference to see that the map is actually moving as the tank moves. So let's kind of dive into the code and see what we changed from the last video in the series to achieve this. So if we look at this 7 camera setup folder, this is where all the code of the new changes are. And let's look at the index.js and kind of walk through if anything might have changed. Um, that's just debugging stuff. So nothing really changed in index. So let's look at the loop, right? So index calls loop when everything is done loading. Loop is our main game loop that runs our update and draw functions. The main thing that I changed is I kind of encapsulated the ability to draw using this draw op, um, object here. Right, so if you remember before, we had these entities which are using the HTML5 context to kind of draw things. And that's good, but unfortunately, your implementation details of HTML5 is bleeding over into your game code. So if you ever wanted to port this over to like a different framework or a library or not use web in HTML, you'd have to go through all of your entities and update your render logic. Whereas now, we just have a single image in square method where if the way to render to the screen is different, we just have to change this code. And we'll see this in action in just a bit. So the first method is image, which you can do to draw an image to the screen. And then you can also provide a rotation to rotate the image if you want. So that will kind of clean up the code for rotating the body and the cannon. And then we have a square method, which basically just draws a square to the screen with a certain color at an XY location. And another thing you'll notice is that everything we draw is now offset by a camera, X and Y. So again, we added the camera system, and we'll kind of talk about that in a second. But every time you draw to the screen now, all your entities will be shifted based on where your camera is. And basically encapsulating all of our draw logic in these methods makes it very easy to set up a camera system. I think we added a helper function to grab entities by ID. So in this case, we have like an entity by ID and we can fetch the tank entity. And that is what we're doing here because later on we need to set the camera to be focused on that tank. So down here you'll see um, we're drawing that grass image at zero, 00. And the grass doesn't really move based on the, or actually sorry, the grass does move based on the camera, but we're just setting this so that we can actually have a reference as we're like driving around, right? So again, we get the tank entity, we draw some grass. And this is the main thing that um, we need to focus on is this camera manager. And basically we can give it a target. And what it does every loop or every game tick is that it changes the camera to kind of be positioned over whatever target we passed. So the fact that this takes in a target is we could simply change the target to something else and our game camera would move to that other entity. So let's dive into camera manager and see what's going on. And it's it's pretty straightforward. It just simply sets camera X and Y to be the target X and Y minus the screens width and height divided by two. Right, so this is important because obviously you want the camera to be centered. So you need to make sure you subtract the width divided by two and the height divided by two. So nothing too special here, just every tick, we just kind of reposition where the camera is based on the target. And then other than that, we obviously are passing that draw method to where we do draw entities. And you'll see here we have a, we're just again passing draw as we draw the entity. So let's look at the tank and see if anything really changed in here. And I think the only thing that changed is the fact that when you do draw gun and draw body, it now takes that draw op um, object, which is going to call that encapsulated image function. So that cleaned up our code a lot, quite a bit. Because if you remember before, we had all this translation and rotation logic inside of both of these functions. But now it's encapsulated or abstracted behind this rotation property. So that made our code a little bit cleaner, um, which is a win in my opinion. So what else can we look at? I think state probably changed a bit. We have um, camera, which was added to the state, and that has an X and Y. And that, I think, is all that changed in state, actually. So pretty straightforward there. I don't think anything in input changed. 
and I don't think images or bullet changed. Well, bullet changed because now we're just calling draw.square. And this is useful because sometimes you just want to draw simple shapes. And I think the built-in way you can do it with HTML5 is a little verbose. And it's nicer if you could just say, draw a rectangle or draw a circle. And not have to do like, uh, I don't know, dot arc and then pass it math.py and math.2py. It's just kind of verbose. But yeah, I think that pretty much wraps up all the changes that we did to kind of imp implement a camera system. Again, this is the result. As you move the tank around, we have the camera locked on and you can see that it follows the tank. So this is really useful when you actually have a larger map that you want to explore and you're not just fixed to a screen width. And lastly, all the code of this series is posted at github.com slash Cody Seibert slash YouTube and you will see in seven camera setup all the code that we changed to make this functional. Again, I'm Cody Seibert. Be sure to like and subscribe if you thought this video was useful and be sure to leave comments if you have any suggestions how I can improve this uh, series or make better content. All right, thank you so much for watching.